Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I'm going to talk about how DNA fingerprinting can be applied in order to solve uh, different modern problems, not only forensic problems, but also, for example, uh, paternity, um, t as paternity test. So here's a problem. Mother is trying to decide between two men who desperately want to support her and her newborn baby both want to be a part of the baby's life because they love the mother so much who gets the honor and privilege and here is the four answers to choose from first of all uh, i want to say that this is problem taken from the uh, american textbook if it would be russian textbook uh, it would be rephrased that there are two men uh, who claims that they are not father of the child. So, uh, in order, of course, not to pay alimony, and of course, if uh, such a woman who don't know uh, who is the father of the child, most likely wouldn't be an object to fight over for her love and so on. So, anyway, uh, what we have here, uh, we have uh, DNA fingerprints of the uh, child, mother, and prospective uh, father one and father two. First of all, a uh, few words about DNA fingerprinting. Uh, I would use only one pair of chromosomes, but we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so uh, the picture would be the same for all 23 pairs of chromosomes, in DNA fingerprinting only certain chromosomes are used, certain pairs of chromosomes, so you would know that the same technique is applied to all these certain um, chromosomes. So here is, uh, uh, for example, chromosome number one from the mother side, uh, another chromosome, homologous chromosome number one from the mother side, and when we cross with another two chromosomes from the father side, also this can be chromosome number one, two homologous chromosomes, because we have uh, all chromosomes in pairs, 23 pairs, total number of chromosomes 46, and uh, scientists find some uh, fragments on each chromosome, such fragments we call loci, and in such loci, um, different number of repeats can be present in different uh, people. So, uh, this would be variable number of tandem repeats. For example, uh, here is such locus, and for example, um, tandem repeat can be A, C, a, C, A, C. For example, in mother, on one of the chromosome, she has three such repeats, so three. And on the other chromosome, because um, she got one chromosome from her mother side, another chromosome from her father side, um, she may have uh, four such repeats. For example, this would be four. And uh, her husband may have here, uh, say, uh, six repeats. And on the other chromosome that he got from the other parent, he may have, uh, say, five repeats. So, uh, or this number can be, for example, also three. But I want to show you what would happen with different number of tandem repeats and scientists call such repeated sequence co-sequence so here is co-sequence that is repeated as you see four times for example and uh, such um, variable number of tandem repeats would be flanked with um, stable uh, sequence that is the same in every person for example this can be G, G, and G. And from this side, this can be um, 
T A T. Uh, of course, we would use uh, for primers sequence that is much longer between 16 and 20 uh, nucleotides, but I just don't have enough space. So uh, special primers would be designed for each sequence and using DNA polymerase chain reaction this fragment would be um, multiplied uh, thousands and millions of times so later uh, such a fragment can be run on the gel. Uh, run meaning that when we apply electrical current because uh, DNA is slight, slightly uh, negative uh, when we have positive charge on one side, negative charge on the other side. If we load uh, our sample here from this side, all the DNA would start to move in the direction of the positive charge and um, would spread according to molecular weight and length. So this fragment would be heaviest and longest. So this would travel um, minimum uh, distance and this one would be smallest and uh, lightest and would travel, as you see, much farther. Now uh, let's return back to our example. So as you see, this is deployed, uh, say, father. This is deployed mother. And each parent would produce gametes. Mother would produce egg cells and father would produce sperm. So only one chromosome uh, can end up in the gamete. So this can be whether this one or this one. For mother, whether this one or this one. Not both or uh, if none of them would, would be present in the gamete. Uh, such uh, Excel wouldn't be viable. So uh, what uh, different combinations we may have here? We may have uh, in the uh, zygote this uh, chromosome from the mother side and this chromosome from the father side. So combination would be three repeats from the mother side and six repeats from the father side. We may also have this chromosome and this chromosome. So we would have 3 and 5. We may also have this chromosome that would combine with this chromosome. In this uh, case we would have 4 and 6. And we may also have this chromosome combined with this chromosome. So in this case we would have uh, four and five repeats in the child. So as you see, uh, this is also going to be deployed zygote that would develop later into the child. And this is possible uh, combinations and repeats that we can find in the child. So uh, mother produce gametes and father produce sperm that uh, join and form zygote that later would uh, develop into the uh, fetus and the child. So as you see, different combinations are possible and this is just only one pair of chromosomes. And uh, for DNA fingerprinting, we're using certain different sites or uh, loci. So uh, number of combinations is huge. But, as you see the pattern, uh, no matter uh, what would be combinations, one of the um, variable number of tandem repeats would come from mother side, another from the father side, from the mother side, from the father side, from the mother side, and so on. So that means that 50% of the uh, tandem repeats in a child should be the same like in mother. 
and 50% of the tandem repeats should be the same like in father. So that means that this baby here should have 50% uh, of the bands to be the same like in mother and another 50% as in father. So let's now analyze what we have here. This fragment that contains variable number of tandem repeats is uh, the same as in mother. But uh, next one is uh, the same like uh, in perspective that number 2 and next one is uh, the same like in mother. Uh, let's see what is the next one would be and the next one is the same like uh, in perspective that number two but also on the question uh, that number one so probably this two person has the same variable number of tandem repeats uh, in the same locus next would be this fragment that is the same like in uh, perspective uh, that number two and once again here we have the same fragment the same lens as in mother and next one the same as in perspective father number two and uh, next one once again the same lens as in mother so as you see 50% of the variable number of uh, tandem repeats fragments this child got from his mother and another 50% from his father and here we have uh, one coincidence with unrelated person this uh, can happen because uh, variable number of tandem repeats uh, can be different in different people but also can be the same in, in different people but uh, such coincidence may happen in very small percent so uh, now we can choose the correct answer and this is answer B by the way I just noticed that this band is also under the question but still this uh, perspective father has 50% uh, of the same loci like in child and this father perspective uh, father has only two so we can exclude this person and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video Please write your comments, questions if you have any, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.